I thank you all for being here as a Vietnam veteran. I'd like to extend a welcome home to all of our veterans in the audience and to any Gold Star families that we have here today. The purpose of this whole thing is to honor our vets. So join me in prayer at this time, please. God of our fathers, fathers, we lift you up as our God Almighty, recognizing you as the maker, provider, and sustainer of the world we live in and of the universe that surrounds us. We humbly bow before you and ask that you bless the Reeves Across America initiative to remember the fallen, honor the veterans serving, and teach the children the children, the future of America, that their freedom is not free. We pray that you will help us instill in the children of America the values of integrity, honor, compassion for their fellow man, and a desire to serve those less fortunate than themselves. To honor the sacrifice of our veterans by living a, wor a life worth fighting for. Bless all the volunteers of this effort and the convoy as it travels on to the sacred grounds of Arlington Cemetery. And this we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. This is hollow ground. It's where those who chose to serve our great nation, those whose service protected and defended our freedoms and liberties have been laid to rest. They deserve to be remembered, not only on Memorial Day and Veterans Day, but throughout the year, and certainly at this most solemn season where peace and joy should permeate our lives. Thank you, all of you volunteers, and all who donated to sponsor a wreath, so that we can say, without fear of contradiction, we have not, nor we will ever forget the sacrifice of those who proudly wore the uniform of our nation. May God bless all of you, and may you and your loved ones experience the profound joy of this season. Thank you. Let's have a moment of silence for the 15,000 people that are out here today, as every one of their names is going to be read at some point today.
Good morning, church family. It's the fourth Sunday of Advent. Are you as excited as I in the hope to come? Hope gives us reasons to celebrate the Christmas season. Most of us are dealing with the hustle and bustle of preparing for December 25th. Many probably associate gift giving with the three gifts the Magi or the wise men gave to Jesus. However, the practice of gift giving began in the fourth century with the Romans to celebrate an offering to their God of Saturn and usually lasted seven days. It was a way of them giving fortune for the coming year. Let us not forget the true reason for the season, the coming of Jesus Christ. Let us remember, especially during this year of a pandemic, loss of life due to COVID, loss of employment, political discord, racial discord, a country that is scattered in many different ways, torn by things that only God or Jesus can correct. But let us celebrate with our families and relationships that we have within our church and outside of our church. Celebrate the blessings that Christ brings to us. Rejoice and let others know the blessings that come with Christ. What a blessing, what a season. Let us pray. Merciful and heavenly one, we come before you this fourth Sunday of Advent, filled with love, joy, peace, and hope for the future of our nation, our families, and our churches. We are so blessed to have Jesus as our savior. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, whether to COVID or other illnesses. We pray for those who have had a loss of employment who have no homes to go to, or who have lost homes or have been turned out of their homes during a season when they had no control over what was happening. We ask you to lift them up, Jesus. Lift our country up, Lord. Lift our leaders up. Leaders of our churches, leaders of our nation, Lord. Let us return to you if we've fallen out of the fold. We pray for a season of love and peace. Bless this service and the word that is about to be delivered. Bless the deliverer of the word. Bless our pastors, Pastor Gail Stallings Minor and Pastor Lawrence Pellin and all other pastors as well. Lead them and guide them. Guide and lead our leadership of our churches Lord, we ask, we're asking these things for many reasons. We ask this be the most blessed Christmas season ever. One that is filled with gratefulness and love and the anticipation of, your, of the coming of your son, Jesus Christ. We ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. I hope you all are staying well and safe out there. I will be bringing to you this week's Advent reading, this week, our fourth week of Advent, and it reads as thus. God favored a young girl named Mary, an ordinary girl, just like your daughter or granddaughter, just like the girls in your community or girls anywhere. As the angel of God said to Mary, the Lord is with you. 
Jesus is Emmanuel. God is with us. We relight the candles of hope, faith, and joy. And this week, we light the candle of peace. We have peace in that God is near. God is as close to us as the breath we breathe, even when we forget or ignore the Holy Spirit. God's presence brings the peace that passes all understanding. We can have peace because Christ has come and Christ will come again. O come, O come, Emmanuel. May the Lord add a blessing to the, this reading. Thanks be to God.
lights, please? And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Time for tithes and offering. Lord, our rock and redeemer, thank you that you are infinitely, consistently, and perfectly wise. You have said that whatever we give is acceptable if we give it eagerly. You have said that we should give according to what we have. Help us to bring our offering with an eager heart, not as a comparison with others, but as an act of worship to you. May we find the comfort we desire in you and the strength we need in your name. May your presence be with us every hour of the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For Buttonwood UMC Ways to Give, you can mail checks to Buttonwood United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 407, Newcastle, Delaware, 19720. You can pay online through the online personal banking bill pay option. For Coleman Memorial UMC Ways to Give, you can mail checks to Coleman Memorial United Methodist Church, 465 and a half Anderson Drive, Wilmington, Delaware, 19801. You can pay online at ColemanMemorialUMC.com and click on the donation tab online through your personal banking bill pay option or through cash app and our handle is dollar sign Coleman Memorial. Good morning. Come on and praise with us as we sing praises and worship unto our King. Join us in singing Alpha and Omega. Say you are Alpha, you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be
Come on, worship. We give you Good morning, Common family. I'll be reading scripture from the Old Testament, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 11 and verse 16. God's covenant to David. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I'm living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But the same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving around in a tent, in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel? whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Where have you not, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pastures, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies before you. And I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones of this earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be dis disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time I have appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Amen. Good morning, church. Today I will be reading for you Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, titled, The Birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. I 
100 miles to freedom. Would you like to pick a new name to mark your freedom? Heritum. Early in the morning, before the sun begins to shine, we're gonna start moving towards that separation. Salvation And I'll fight with the strength That I got until I die So I'm gonna stand up Take my people with me Together we are going To a brand new home Far across the river You hear freedom calling Calling me to answer Gonna keep on keeping Welcome to the Underground Railroad. And I know what's around the bend might be hard to face cause I'm alone. And I just might fail, but Lord knows I'll try. Good morning, Coleman family. Good morning, Buttonwood family. Thank you so much for joining us. We're on the heels of the holiday season, and I know you have a question, a lot of questions about why I'm down by the train station near the Sunday breakfast mission, and we'll get into that, but I want to start off with prayer. Oh, healer of the world, you are afflicted in the suffering of your people and are full of compassion and tender mercy. As we come to you, Father, seeking a word and a message for this day and our week, hear our silent prayers. Father, hear us as we pray for those who suffer, for all who suffer trauma in the body and mind, for those whose livelihood is insecure, for the overworked, the hungry, the homeless, the destitute, for those who have been downtrodden, ruined, and driven to despair. Father, we pray for the little children whose surrounding may hide them from your love and your beauty, for all the fatherless and motherless, for those who have to bear their 
burdens alone and for all those who have lost those whom they love. For those who are in doubt and anguish for over their souls, for those who are oversensitive and afraid, for those who suffer through their own wrongdoing, for those whose suffering is revealed and don't need to be relieved by your knowledge and your love. Set free, Father, the souls of your servants from all restlessness and anxiety. Give us peace and power that flow from you. Keep us all, all perplexities and distresses. Keep them from us and all grief and grievances from any fear and faithlessness. And may we abide in you today and hear your voice, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. It is indeed cold out here. And are probably in the warmth of your home and this morning I'm in Wilmington down by the train tracks near the Sunday breakfast mission this of course is where we find a lot of our brothers and sisters who are going through challenges in their life and have taken up residency here I know you're asking pastor why before Christmas are you there giving a sermon the holiday represents joy for all of us for all humanity right well, remember that saying that joy comes in the morning? Today, I wanna to talk to you about rejection and the night before. Rejection and the night before. And what that looks like, what that smells like, what that feels like, how cold that is. At the top of the worship service, I had a passage from a classic from the Charlie Brown's Christmas TV program read because Linus had to remind folks then and I believe now of the true meaning of Christmas. Like the characters in that tale, we like the commercial holiday version of Christmas and we may have lost track of the true meaning. But today, as I stand here down by the Sunday breakfast mission, I am reminded of Christ and the night before. I am reminded of rejection, the fact that there was no room in the end for a pregnant Mary who was on the verge of delivering baby Jesus. The scripture reads, in those days of Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went from their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, and to the town of David, because he belonged to the house of David. He went there to register with Mary and was pledged to be married to him and an expecting child and while they were there the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn son wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no available room for them my question is who turns away a pregnant woman who tosses aside someone in need of shelter someone so vulnerable well, today we glamorize that scene, but Jesus had to be placed in a manger, and a manger is a feeding trough for animals. The parents of Christ were left to deliver the baby Jesus in a barn, sleep and take up residency in a barn, a dirty, smelly, probably uncomfortable, poorly lit, probably bug and rodent infested, barn Mary Joseph and Jesus were sleeping on the street looking a lot like this situation here I can ask and I ask again I ask again who tosses aside someone in need someone so vulnerable someone in most need of shelter, someone 
pregnant someone vulnerable. Someone vulnerable, needy, hurting, poor. So who tosses away someone like that? Look around. We do. We are the innkeepers of our generation. And just as Jesus came to save the vulnerable then, praise God, his saving blood still washes us today from the sin of that kind of behavior, that kind of disregard, that kind of loss or lack of love. I know we all get caught up in the whirlwind of life, especially during this time of year, the whirlwind of the holiday season, the whirlwind of wanting to see our family and get some peace from the hectic work lives that we live and have just some joy to savor just for a minute. No doubt the innkeeper then wasn't being malicious. Perhaps he was just overwhelmed with life, with life's demands and work demands and, and all of that just moving too fast and just wasn't thinking. And it is not just the big noticeable sins in which Jesus came to redeem us of but also those little things, those things that we forget, those things that we overlook, those things that we don't think that are that big of deal. Those things we ourselves don't see as sins, they, they aren't intentional and purpose to harm. We just get caught up in the whirlwind of the world and we just fall off on our Christian accountability. You know, those things where we take for granted, we take care of the weak, the elderly, the widow, the grieving, the imprisoned, the lonely, the destitute, the vulnerable, the lost, the mentally ill, the hungry, the poor, that mom that is in labor with no place to go. And we fall off on our promise to God to be like Jesus and cover our brothers and sisters when they are down. And we perhaps misstep. 2 Samuel 7 tells us how thankful David was for God, God's grace, even when he fell off. And to show his appreciation, David went to build a temple in honor of God, a home for the Ark of the Covenant, and to worship God. And God replied to David by saying, I didn't ask you for that. God's grace is unmerited. We can do nothing to deserve it, and we can do nothing to pay it back. It, it just is. Likewise, all of that celebratory stuff that we do for Christmas and we say in the name of Jesus, and it is not, it is to honor God is unnecessary. God has clearly spelled out time and time again what he wants from us, what he requires of us, and that is to love one another as we love ourselves, to take care of our brothers and sisters, to be our brothers and sisters keeper, to cover one another, protect one another, and keep one another safe. It is our job, our Christian accountability, to lift each other when we are down. That is what God has asked of us. The last part of 2 Samuel says, I have been with you wherever you have gone. I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great like the names of the greatest men on earth and I will provide you a place, a place for my people and I will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed, no longer be destitute. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you, for all of us. The story of the baby Jesus rejected and sent to a manger is about more than the birth of Christ, born to save us. His birth, his life, his example of God's word made flesh, messaging us to save and look out for one another. Calling us to be better, be in community with one another, leaving no one behind. As we move from the manger to the place of rejection, 
to our promised new home. Again and again throughout history, God has shown us what it looks like to save our brothers and sisters. He used Moses as a teacher. He used Harriet Tubman as a te te uh, teacher. And she dramatized, dramatized over and over again. The, the history books tell us that she went back and forth to save her brothers and sisters 19 times and saved 300 people, brought them to freedom. Jesus made one trip, but opened the door and left it open for all of us to follow and mirror his example, mirror his example. Every year through the manger story, God beckons us. And Jesus 14 too, Jesus has promised that in his father's house, there are many rooms and there is room enough for all of us. No one will be, no one will ever be turned away. All are welcome. He came so that we can all have, we can all go to a brand new place, a brand new home, have a brand new life. And so family, I ask that as we move into the holiday season and want to remember the true meaning of Christmas, remember our Christian accountability to our brothers and sisters and what the reason was that Jesus came, not just to save our souls, to save our lives, and to teach us how to save our brothers and sisters. Amen? Let us close in prayer. Christ be with us, Christ before us, Christ behind us, Christ in us, Christ beneath us, Christ above us, Christ on the right and on the left of us, Christ where we lie, Christ where we sit, Christ where we arise, Christ in our hearts, in the hearts of everyone who thinks of us, Christ in every eye who sees us, Christ in every ear who hears us. Almighty God, shield of the oppressed, hear us as we pray for the friendless and the lonely, the tempted and the unbelieving. Father, be merciful to those who suffer in body and in mind, to those who are in danger and distress, to those suffering through the cold, and those who have suffered loss. Let your love surround the infirmed and the aged. Be especially near to those who are passing through the valley of death. May they find eternal rest and light at evening time. Through Jesus our Lord, salvation is our Lord. Salvation is of Christ. May your salvation, O Lord, be ever with us. Amen. Mary, did you know? That your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? That sleeping child you're holding is the grave.